What's going on guys, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I wanna to talk to you about the Java stack. This is something that you've been asking me, what are some of the things I should be learning, what I should focus in order to secure my next Java role, and uh, what companies are using these days. So here we go. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, literally just take one second and smash the like button. Also, if you haven't signed up for the Java Masterclass course, which I'm releasing next week, go ahead and enroll and uh, you'll get a 30% off when I launch the course. But this is a 20 hour long course where I go and teach you Java from the ground up. So this was a course that I did teach at a bootcamp. I did create the entire curriculum myself. And I was like, you know what? Let me just, you know, package it up into an online course and uh, make it super affordable for you guys. So many of the students that I did teach, they went off and they managed to secure jobs. And I'm pretty sure that with determination, hard work, you can also do it. You just have to put in the work. I'll give you all the tools and it's up to you to go learn and apply the knowledge, build tight projects, and I'm pretty sure that you will manage to secure jobs as many of my students. Cool, let's go ahead and talk about the Java stack. So in here, you can actually pick this diagram of my website, but what I wanna focus really is what you need to understand in order to plan your journey. So here, we're going to kick off with Linux. So Linux is a must, not just for Java, but I have to put it there because most likely you're gonna be working with remote servers, you're gonna be working with databases, Kubernetes and all that stuff, Docker, and you need to be comfortable with the terminal. So here, understand what the Linux operating system is, uh, understand the file structure, but more important, understand some of the basic commands. Here, I don't need to know how to write complex bash scripts, just know ls, grep, find, vim, how to use the vim, so it's, it's a scary text editor, not that scary to be honest, but uh, just have um, a, a basic understanding and, and that will be key moving forward. Next, we've got Git. So here, this allows you to work in collaboration with other people. So often, if you are working within a team, it's not just you, but a bunch of developers getting together to write good quality software, hopefully. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So make sure that you know how to use Git, understand branches, commits, how to revert, and all of that stuff. Then we have Java. So Java, obviously we're learning about the Java stack and Java, it's widely used throughout the industry by Google, Facebook, Spotify, Amazon startups. So you need to understand how to use this language, right? So this is what the Java masterclass will teach you. It will make sure that you are comfortable with the language well enough. And I've been saying time and time again, if you know Java, then you are in a good position because learning other languages will be much easier. Cool, now you know Java, then how do you make sure that whatever code you wrote indeed does work? Well, testing. You need to make sure to test your code. I know, writing code to test my code? Seriously? Yes, you have to test your code. Would you ever board on a plane that hasn't been tested? Mm -mm. No. So it's the same thing with code. It's that serious. Like if you find out that your company or the company that you are about to work for, they don't care about testing, then please stay away. Stay away. This is, this is serious stuff, guys. I actually left my, my first job because these law they didn't care about testing. Literally, they, they wrote a bunch of code. How do you know it works? Uh, well, we just test it manually. Seriously? Like, don't be one of them. So testing is important. So here, unit testing, integration testing, contract testing, if you're doing microservices stuff, make sure to understand testing, mocking as well, it's important. So please make sure to test your code. Next, let's move to build tools. So here, Maven or Gradle, if you know that your company or the company that you are about to apply for, they use Maven, go and learn Maven. If they use Gradle, go and learn Gradle. 
Now, a bill tool really is basically a way of you making sure to, you know, kind of compile your code, build the artifacts, use other dependencies, and uh, it's something that you uh, use often in conjunction with CI, so continuous integration, which I'm going to talk in a second. So it's really, really important. So if you start off a brand new Java project, you have to use either Maven or Gradle. It's a must. So then moving on to Spring Boot. So here, Spring Boot is a good framework. So it's one of many. You've got Play, Quarkus, but Spring Boot is one of the most popular ones. And Spring Boot kind of, you know, abstracts a bunch of things that you don't need to know, allowing you to get off the ground to start building APIs or <laughs> APIs or backend applications really quick. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages. And the disadvantage is if you know nothing about Spring Boot or anything prior to Spring Boot, then it will feel like magic because things just work. But you realize that some companies use Spring Boot, so mainly startups. Others don't use Spring Boot. They actually uh, do everything custom, so from the ground up. So I was talking to a guy that works in Spotify, and he said, look, I watch your courses, your videos, even though we don't use um, Spring Boot, but I just f had to learn Spring Boot because I felt like I was missing something because I, I, I seen a lot of people talking about Spring Boot, and um, now I can see how it actually abstracts a bunch of things and I'm able to build POCs or, you know, maybe if I'm applying for a different job, then I've got the right skill sets. So understand Spring Boot, how it works. But if you can try and um, build things yourself, because then you'll have a deeper understanding of why Spring Boot. Cool. Java is a language for the back end and mainly building APIs. So how do you store data? Well, you need to use a relational database. So this is what I really advise you. Start with a relational database. Most startups will use Postgres or MySQL, but I would say use Postgres. And um, yeah, the documentation for Postgres is amazing. There's a bunch of resources out there and uh, databases, it's important, you know, understand the queries, select queries, delete, understand indexes, understand joins and all that good stuff. So make sure to understand databases. Security, you have an awesome API and it's naked without security. Literally, it's naked without security because anyone can find out how it works. And if you don't have any authentication in place, any authorization in place, then basically you're code is vulnerable and uh, trust me nobody will use your application if it has no security right and uh, yeah so usually you'll have people in-house dealing with security security it's a beast on its own but nevertheless understand key security concepts understand authentication authorization understand jwt and oauth2 so with those and um, i would say like try and build software try and build software that basically uses security. Then the next thing that you need to have, and it's very important, is microservices. Understand monolith application, so the difference between, i.e. having one giant server that contains basically everything, or splitting that giant server into small little servers, which this server will perform one and only one thing, this other one, one and only one thing, this one, the same thing, and then they communicate to each other instead of them being one as a whole. Because if you've got one team and they want to deploy their piece of software, they have to take your changes, even though you haven't changed anything, or maybe you've changed something, but you haven't tested, then if they want to deploy, you know, then you're going to have to fix a change or sometimes if you're fixing a sev one, then, you know, it can be troublesome. So microservices is widely adopted by many companies, including startups and have an understanding of microservices. It's a must. So Spring Boot helps us to build microservices really quick. So 
go and learn microservices and i've got a course just on microservices and it's one of the most popular courses on the website so from this point onwards we are moving towards devops world and here i don't need you to know literally everything in depth i just want you to have an understanding so docker you've got your jar let's say you have your jar how do you package that jar into a docker image and from that docker image how do you run container which is the application right so your code because if it works on your machine it will work on any linux server even a windows server provided that it has a docker daemon so docker is widely adopted by everyone kubernetes so here you can deploy your docker container onto a vm which basically um if it dies then no users can access your application sure you can have two or more vms but that doesn't scale kubernetes comes into play understand the problem that kubernetes solves understand pods nodes master nodes worker nodes volumes services just the basics here i don't need to know everything because kubernetes is a beast trust me moving on to aws so we've got a bunch of code here you've learned about kubernetes hopefully using minikube or um, docker for desktop now you want to deploy your code now how does your code runs right so what really stresses me out is you've got a bunch of back-end developers they only care at the point where they push to main or master branch and that's it i don't care that's it no that is the wrong mentality please understand how your code is deployed how your code runs on the cloud so when i switched from back engineering to devops engineering that was one of the best decisions because because now i could see the big picture and that made me a much better engineer so literally learn aws docker kubernetes have an understanding so for aws i would say networking ec2 and eks so here eks maybe you don't need to know um you know inside out but eks is just a managed kubernetes um solution but you know you'll have the devops team you know making sure that the kubernetes cluster is all configured you don't need to do none of that but i just needed to know that it exists and um what it does same with networking and ec2 so ec2 is just the, the the vm that aws has now here aws is one cloud provider but you have azure gcp linode and many others so aws is one of the most popular ones out there but depending on what the company that you are working for or the company that you are applying for uses then go and uh, have an understanding but if you understand one cloud provider then moving to the other one it will be the same, just different terminology. Last but not least, CI, CD. So here you've pushed something to main or master branch. How do you make sure that your change does not affect the current state? I.e. if you pushed uh, your code, you, we, you, we need to make sure that we run tests. See, see, tests to make sure that you haven't broken anything or to make sure that you haven't broken existing code or to make sure that your new code indeed does work with all the unit testing integration testing contract testing and whatnot so if we have a green build plus all the checks that the ci pipeline might have then good at that point we can actually take those changes and deploy to a kubernetes cluster or a virtual machine if you are using um you know just vms basically right now, this is when CD or continuous delivery or deployment comes into play. Now, here for CI CD, you can use Jenkins, Circle CI, GitHub Actions. And again, here, just pick one, I'll say Jenkins, maybe. It's open source, easy to get up and running with. And um, you can try and experiment with CI CD. And again, as I said, like the DevOps world, it's massive and you've got teams taking care of of uh, these things but as i said 
I want you to become an engineer. I want you to become an engineer. And you having an understanding of all of this will indeed make you a better engineer. Cool. Let me know if I've missed anything by commenting down below. Smash the like button, subscribe. And as I said, I'm going to release the Java Masterclass course next week. So stay tuned for that by heading to amigoscore.com and subscribe to the mailing list for 30% off. This is all for now. I'll catch you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.